Yeah. So uh, there was some guy who was like a sports journalist or something like that. I mean, I don't know anything about sports and or journalism or sports journalism, you know, combined. <laughs> but he was like, and yet you're a uh, trainer and a writer. I, what are the odds? You know, it's like I'm a. <laughs> I, I'm There's a lot of contradictions a, in this world. I know, I know. It, it's uh, that does surprise people because people are like, "Oh, so you must have been like really into sports as a kid." I'm like, "I'm not really into sports now." You know, like I like I like being strong. <laughs> I like being fit. I just I unless it's like MMA, I don't. Or maybe we'll say like collegiate wrestling or Olympic wrestling. Like it just doesn't. You know, it doesn't buy. It doesn't. It doesn't interest me. But um, there was some sports. This is why there. you and I get along so well. Where, yeah, um, I, I also only like wrestling and I got into working out as a way to get out of playing sports because I can take weight training instead of actually doing basketball or something like that that I was a scrub at. That was an option? In my high school, you could take weight training and I signed up for that freshman year. I said, this is great. No more uh, having to try to avoid actual sports while oh, actually doing them. It's, it's always a delicate dance, you know, in gym class. It's like you don't really want to play, but you're forced to. So you're kind of half-assing it a little bit. Dude, every time that was what it was like for me. And it's it's funny that we're talking about this because I remember uh I, I it sounds to me like your weightlifting class was probably pretty formative for you. Mine was like the reverse. It like like just encouraged me to not want to, you know, physically exert myself. I there's a story that I tell not infrequently that um I we didn't train, we did weight training. This was like junior year, maybe I don't know, like once or twice a week. We had it, it was the gym class, there was gym class every day. Um, but I remember one time in particular, it was bench press day. It was probably a Monday, you know, if, if the American <laughs> standard is in high school gym class every day is bench press day, right? The, it, the more I think about it, the more I think that's right, because I don't remember ever doing squats or deadlifts or anything like that. I do remember doing more pull ups than one of like the star football players. And like the the gym teacher just yelled at him. Now I don't think my pull ups were great. I remember doing eight for some reason, and I am sure that it was like you know the partial reps, like not locked out the some elbows. kicking, some squirming. But that's that's still pretty good. I very yeah. I, I mean I'm still proud of it because the it was the best in the class. It sounds like it. Well, it, among the football players, yes. What was crazy was that like most of them were uh, just these like big, huge, hulking dudes and. One of the guys in particular who was, uh, you know, he was Or at least like, they seemed that way when you were 15, right? Right, exactly. Yeah, when you were 15 or 16 <laughs> and and you were like me because I was like short and I, I couldn't have weighed more yeah. than like 135 pounds. Uh, and he, everybody was huge, pretty much. Um, but uh, this one guy in particular, <laughs> I, he, the football player, I felt bad for him because uh, he was, su he couldn't have been a nicer dude. He was like the archetypical, like like alpha nice guy. Meaning, you know, he was definitely everything you would you would refer to as an alpha male, but he was kind to people, you know, like and he stood up for people who he saw being being treated unfairly and stuff like that. And he got yelled at for only doing two pull ups. Uh, so I, I that was on on the part of the gym teacher. So um, nevertheless, I still did more pull ups than he did, but uh, I don't think I mean, he deserved. I'm, I'm sure he also got praised occasionally, right? Oh, I'm sure he did. I mean, it wasn't he, wasn't like he exclusively got yelled at. You know? No, 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 no. It was just this guy one. needed to work on his pull ups. He had yeah. the other stuff down, right? Absolutely. Well, and this gym teacher, his name was uh, Coach Chavez. I believe it's been a long enough time where I can I could just you know say his name. I always got along great with the guy. He was super nice to me, but he was like very tough on his athletes, and um, yeah, it paid off because we ended up being the state champions that year so or no the year after that it was like oh four um in football i'm sure we, we i don't know how we did it everything did, else but did this young man actually step up his pull-up game after that incident you know what i haven't i don't think i've spoken to him since high school so we're coming up on close to probably 18 years but if i bump into him by chance i will i will ask him because i am genuinely curious he doesn't follow your Facebook page. He's not on your newsletter. He's not going to get to see this. I hope he will. I actually, I do hope he will, because like I said, he was always nothing but kind to me. We got along great. And um, I don't know if he follows me or not, because we were never friends on Facebook. This was, you know, like we basically, it was like in that one Fast and Furious movie where Paul Walker drives in one direction and, you know, 
uh, Vin Diesel drives the other direction. And we just never spoke again. But the difference is that we're both still alive. So it, maybe it's not a great analogy. Um, like I said, I hope that he's on the, the old newsletter. I hope he's listening to this. Um, I haven't said his name, but I guess probably he remembers that incident in high school well enough that he can deduce who he is, should he be listening. Um, but mm. I'll have him on the podcast. I like, I like mysteries, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Anybody from my high school who's listening is almost certain to know it, or at least be able to guess who it might have been. Because I think, I don't know if he was the quarterback or what, but I remember he was on the front page of the newspaper, not the school newspaper, like the town newspaper after they went. The newspaper newspaper, the real one. Exactly. When those were a thing. <laughs> exactly. Correct. Um, at that, I mean, I'm dating myself here big time uh, in that regard, but. Uh, one second here. It wasn't him. My, my dad is in the background, and he was suggesting that it was Eric Crouch. Now, Eric Crouch was, for those of you who are listening, he was a Heisman Trophy winner, and he did go to my high school. But, uh, but that was, he graduated, I think, a, a few years before I even became a senior. So uh, very good, very good that you remember that. Uh, I'm, for those who are listening, and who are interested. Uh, I'm in Israel right now. My dad and I are both in, in Israel as of the time of this recording. And so he happened to hear my voice carry over into the other room. And uh, he suggested Eric Crouch. Uh, it was not him, unfortunately. But, uh, but as far as weight, uh, weight room training, you, you guys probably didn't do all that much by way of calisthenics either, right? It was all bench press and deadlift. And the only things I remember doing in that high school weight training class are bench press and a couple of cable exercises, maybe like a tricep push down, you know, to assist the bench press. Yes. And then possibly a lat pull down. I feel like that, that was something that was out there. And I, I think I did, I did probably same as you, some chin ups, like some, some half kind of kicking, not so good ones. Yeah. I, I don't feel like you know, it was we had one of those those pegboard things. Yes. I remember that. I remember doing just being able to get one was was a big deal. And I think I could by junior year I could kind of move it a little bit. You know, yeah, I think pegboard is probably one of those things that uh, you see all over the place. At least in like older high schools that never renovated their gym, um, and like, but nobody ever uses them. I, I remember them. I don't remember if we had one in the in the high school or not. I remember. We didn't have a rope, actually. I was, I was thinking we did for some reason. Um, but yeah, like all that old school gymnastics stuff, they just, we never really did that. At push ups were probably a punishment. Yeah, they were definitely a punishment if they were anything. So if like any calisthenic stuff was either do pull ups or get yelled at, uh, or do push ups because you got yelled at. So <laughs> there was not much by way of like calisthenic education. Well, the, the way I recall gym class throughout all of my public school time um, is that the gym teachers really weren't very involved the way other teachers were. And yeah. it was more like, all right, go play basketball today, throw a couple balls out, and then the gym teacher is just going to go sit in the office and do whatever he's doing, and you, you guys will figure it out. And in weight training, it was, it was for the most part like that, too. Maybe once in a while, the teacher might pop out and give people a couple of tips or just, you know, tell some rambly stories like you and I are doing now. People yeah. who work out like to do that apparently. And, uh, and that was it. You know, there wasn't a whole lot of guidance, which in retrospect, I, I get more now as an adult why they would do it that way. Cause kids are getting told all day, you know, exactly what to do. And that's one period where they should have a little more freedom. And I think we appreciated it at the time. Definitely. Yeah. Like it, it's interesting to say that because th that was the, that was kind of like the one time you could take your aggression out on like other students, you know, like dodgeball. You're like, I'm going to, I'm going to like absolutely whip this ball as hard as I can at, at that dude's head. Well, I was usually the one getting the ball whipped at me. I wasn't, I wasn't a very good athlete as we discussed earlier. Same. So, so dodgeball was not one of my favorites. No, no. I remember <laughs> that we had this game. I don't know if it was like just in our high school. Um, it was remarkably fun. Like I always sucked at like every sport with the one exception of badminton. Now mm. I didn't you realize were good at badminton. A little wordplay there. What are the odds? It's the same thing with like, you know, even though I write and even though I'm a, a personal <laughs> trainer, <laughs> I don't know anything about sports or journalism. So I'm, I'm like a, a walking mix of these weird contradictions. Uh, but I was remarkably good at badminton. And, uh, 
you know, I was like, okay, whatever. It's a gym class sport. I didn't realize it was an Olympic sport, you know, like maybe that could have been like my window into like Olympic gold or bronze at the very least. Well, you, weren't, you weren't that good probably though, right? <laughs> well, uh, I will say this. I, pro I, I can't say that I was Olympic level good because I've still never watched it in the Olympics. So I don't know how much better these people <laughs> even are, but it was the only sport that I was like preternaturally predisposed to rock at everything else. I was mm -hmm. like just two left feet. Like I remember one time, uh, I, for whatever we were supposed to be playing in doubles, like you'd have a team and I didn't have a, a partner. So I was going like two on one and like keeping up with like two different people, which again, for as like what set, I guess it would have been 16 and just sort of like awkward and gangly. That was like, I was like, wow, I can't believe I'm like doing this well because I, I can barely throw a basketball to save my life. Um, but badminton, I totally killed it at. So who knows? You know, I'm sure you had a, I'm sure there was a similar thing for you. Like maybe you sucked at basketball, but you crushed it at soccer or something like that. Well, the, the one thing I was pretty good at is calisthenics. And I found that when I was 30. Yeah, I, I was reading that. You said that <laughs> recently. Was that on like Twitter or was it on Instagram or something like that. I've, I've been tweeting more. I, I haven't. Twitter was never a medium that I really threw myself into. And, and recently I said, you know what? I should put a little more time and effort into tweeting. It's, it's its own thing. It's different than the other ones. So you just it's, put little quips like that out there that might not be worthy of a, a full post on exactly. other forums. Yeah. Have you been finding that it's helpful? Because I used to, I mean, so I went for a couple of months. So I was like tweeting every day and it would be like threads and everything. And it was like farting into the wind. You know, it was like. I didn't get anything out of it. Uh, so far, I haven't seen a ton of traction, but you know, a little, a little growth. Yeah. And I've, I've, you know, since I left New York, I've thrown myself entirely into working remotely. You know, mm -hmm. when I was in New York, I still had several clients I trained in person, but here, I've been putting more time into social media because I have more time to devote to it. And if I'm not training people in person, that's how I'm going to, you know, make money directly and indirectly yeah it's great you know you can actually get paid from facebook and, and instagram now if you if you post enough stuff and enough people watch it but that's that's not what i meant to get into with this ramble what the heck did we even talking about before i got sidetracked we're talking about twitter because we were saying oh that, yes yeah social media growth have i seen any growth and the answer is a little bit and i'm not ready to throw in the towel yet but i've seen a lot of growth on on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram in the last seven months because I've been putting a lot more time and effort into them. That's, that's, that's how these things tend to work. Yeah, you know, I, I got into this like um, kick last year. It was like late February. I was listening to this. It was like a private podcast from this, uh, like a, a, we'll say like a business and marketing uh, guy that I follow. And he was like, I'm, I'm going to, you know, read off, like, he's got a monthly book that he puts out, like literally a book, right? A guy who like is a, like a, a workaholic. Now I'm sure it's not like, you know, war and peace every month, but it's something sure. where it's like, you know, a couple thousand a, words, at least hopefully something like that. Yeah. And he read a section from it. One of the things that he said is that, you know, if you want to grow your business, you need to figure out what it is that you've been avoiding doing and, or two things or something like that. And you need to do it every single day. And I was like, you know what? I need to, I need to grow my email list. So I'm going to start posting more stuff on social media because, you know, like it's, it's worked well for me in the past, but I've been very sporadic. So yeah, I just started making posts like on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. I, mean, I, I got to tell you, Alex, I, I think you are one of the most underrated people in social media. And, and I, I hope that doesn't sound like a backhanded compliment. I don't no. understand why you don't have a larger following. I think you put out so much good content. You're thoughtful. You're witty. I like the way you choose your words. I like the the, the advice that you give. And uh, I just, I don't get it. I don't get why why hundreds of thousands of people aren't, aren't following you. And for that matter, I, I don't get why more people aren't following me either. I think I'm pretty great too. I agree. But I think no matter how many followers you have, you know, everyone's like more, 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 right? That's yeah, exactly. Well, first of all, I appreciate that, you know, because that's always been my goal. I always want to anything I put out, I want people to feel like I did not waste my time on this post. You know, like I actually this was an investment, you know, like I feel like I got time given back to me because now I know how I can save it in the future on my training. And I think 
to some degree, you know, I, I would be willing to bet that a lot of the people who are um, looking for fitness related stuff on social media, they're either not actually, and this is just a sense I get, you know, I haven't looked into any studies or, you know, conducted them myself, but I think a lot of them are looking for hot takes and they're looking for um, like short-term solutions to like lifestyle problems and and they yeah. aren't as dedicated as like some of the stuff that you see people put out it's a you know hot take like why well, you should never eat carbs again you know or they're not polarizing uh, enough exactly exactly i think i could be more polarizing and do it reasonably without sacrificing my principles and values there's, there's definitely a, a dance that you have to do where you're not exactly what you said not sacrificing what you believe not sacrificing your values yeah. but also playing the game a little bit and and making things how the audience wants them and that's that's something that i've been especially in the last few months that i've been investing more time in social media something i've been really delicate with yeah i on the one hand too it's like like okay you do have to make sure that what you're saying is something that you actually believe in. But I think it's also okay to take like a hard stance on something while admitting you what I'm to. saying isn't right for everybody. It's only right yeah. for certain people, you know? And you know, in this day and age, there's such a tendency on behalf of the audience. And it's only a very small percentage of the audience. But if you reach enough people, that small percentage becomes a lot of people. Oh, yeah. But there's a small percentage of people who are going to feel like you are personally insulting them. And that's a delicate thing to have to dance around also. Like, how do I say something that's a strong opinion and be true to what I believe and not make people feel too much like I'm attacking them personally? Yeah. You want to hear a funny story about exactly that? Um, God, I, I love should, funny stories. Yes. I should see if I could pull this up. Like, I, I, think, I think I have screenshots of it. So there was a couple of, uh, this is a couple of years ago. And... Uh, uh, it was 2019, actually, the Game Changers documentary came out by uh, uh, James Cameron. And uh, sure. I was making, you know, it, and, you know, it's it was about like why veganism is like the way to go and why. Oh, athletes... I'm, I'm familiar with it. You're familiar. I've, okay, I've, so. I've seen it debunked more than I've seen it praised. Yeah. It, at it this was... point. But in the beginning, yeah, there were a lot of people who were. It was cringy. Oh. I remember. <laughs> Even I, I think I, I watched the first 20 minutes. I'm like, I can't believe people are really going to buy this. This is like, to me, it seemed more like the sort of a thing. People will buy anything if you sell it hard enough, right? You know, the one of the things that was crazy about that movie is that they did something. It was like somebody ate, I don't know, it was like a, they had two athletes eat like a chicken burrito and then like two others ate like a bean and avocado burrito with no meat in it or something like that. And then they did some sort of like blood or plasma uh, whatever and then they they shook their blood up or whatever and then they showed when it separated like oh well the plasma here is clear in you know the people who ate the, the vegan option but in the people who ate the chicken option it's like cloudy i was like well who cares like what what does it even mean like it and it, of course it didn't mean anything but the thing is people good watched, visual yeah people watched it and i remember somebody telling me like well yeah it was it was it was clear when they ate the the vegan one and it was cloudy when they ate the chicken one i was like what what what's the significance of that and they're like well, well, i don't know i mean it was it was cloudy <laughs> so uh, clear is better obviously yeah, uh, of course <laughs> you want to have a, a clear window or do you want to have a cloudy window so um i posted something in a group that uh, i believe you have taken part in in the past it was a facebook group the convict conditioning group which sure. I, I think it's a great group. I mean, there's a it's lot. Legendary. Yeah, it, it's been and around. It's been it's, active for a decade and people still posting it. it it's, it's not it's just spam. Boggles my mind. I actually, I saw a post. There's a guy. Uh, uh, we should make sure that this interview was posted in this that forum, by the way. We, I definitely will make sure of that. <laughs> and uh, if for some reason, you know, I don't think it would get taken down because I, I'm a member in good standing. But if it should, I know that at the very least, they would never take down a post by you. So if it, if it's... Uh, if Shout it's out to everybody in the Convict Conditioning Forum on Facebook. Hey, Absolutely. hey, hey. Absolutely. <laughs> we are still watching you and we're, uh, we're amazed by the fact that it's been over a decade and this, and this bad boy is still running. Well, I posted, a, I made a post and it was like, uh, I, I don't remember exactly. I'm... I, but I think this is what it was. I said, um, 
what is your favorite uh, sci-fi movie by James Cameron? Mine is The Game Changers. <laughs> and, uh, and that's funny. You're having a lighthearted take. You know, exactly. you're not trying to go on. I, I, yeah, exactly. You're, you're, I know what you're going to say. I'm not trying to take, we'll say, take the piss you know, out of, out of uh, any vegans. Of course, I'm not a vegan. I mean, you, you are, but in a playful way. You're not being a jerk about it. You're not attacking anyone. Exactly. I'm not, it's exactly. A, it's, a very, it's a very gentle jab you're throwing out there. It's at, with kid gloves on, no less. So it's like wow. gentle jab, kid gloves, everything. I've always felt that when someone's trying to be funny, you should be more likely to give them the benefit of the doubt and not take offense because they're making a joke. Yeah. Of course, there's, there's, a, there's a kernel of truth behind every joke too, but it's usually a better approach to come at something with a more lighthearted attitude. Oh yeah. Like we're doing with this interview today. I'm enjoying this. Go on. Exactly. Exactly. Well, then you'll enjoy this because there was a guy who gave me zero benefit of the doubt. He came in like just, he, he said some stuff like, like you speak of meat as though you F it every night, you know, meat is disgusting and whatever. And he was just like, I mean, he, it was like probably two paragraphs worth, you know, no spaces, you know, very whatever, just lambasting me. And then I just wrote back, I bet you're fun at parties. <laughs> and, and then like- that's, a, that's the perfect response. Yeah. And then he just kept, came back with another volley and like, it was so funny. And I made an Instagram post about it. And uh, this was years ago. Unfortunately, my Instagram uh, went the way of the dodo as well as my original Facebook profile because it got hacked uh, last year. And, you are on Instagram now though, right? I think yeah, I follow you on Instagram. Yeah. It's I, just a different account. Exactly. Yeah. I broke the law. Got it. I made a brand new, I mean, I guess I didn't break a new law, but um, yeah, it was, it was so stupid. Folks, if you were listening, I'm going to break the, the fourth wall for a second here. Get two factor authentication. I did not have that on my account. And that was, that was what did me in because somebody was able to hack in uh, and they just, you know, they had free reign. And then of course, you know, account got banned and Instagram went with it. But um, I'll see if I can track it down. I will send it to you because it was like the funniest and like most, uh, what's the word? Bad faith reaction to a joke that I think I've ever experienced on the world wide web. Well, you know, when, when commenters do things like that, you have to remember that they're really telling you more about themselves than they're telling you about you. And that most people, I mean, certainly my, me, when I'm scrolling comments, I laugh at stuff like that. I'm like, this person's an idiot. So it's not like they're getting one over on you. No. You know, they, they might think in their mind, I sure told him. Yeah. <laughs> but outside of their mind, it, it, that doesn't exist. Yeah. So you I, can't yeah. let it get you too much. Although I certainly, I'm a sensitive guy. I've had moments where I've gotten really annoyed by things that people have typed and then i have to take a deep breath to remind myself they're a loser yeah and i have a very good life exactly. why should i let that bother me exactly you know i remember years ago you told me you were like and, and this is obviously not the case for everybody we always got to add that caveat so that people don't right land there are exceptions to general things that people say yeah yeah you said something like YouTube comments are the bottom of the barrel for social media comments. <laughs> and that stuck with me. I was like, I, I have, I'm very fortunate because a lot of people who comment on my stuff are, are actually commenting insightful and helpful things. You know, periodically I get a troll, but like I'll go to other videos and it's just like, just people like word vomited all over the, the, you know, the page or they're just like digging into whoever was the original poster or whatever. And it's, yeah, it's nuts. It, it, you were you were right, like long before I'd ever even seen it. But that's exactly what the way, the way that a lot of these YouTube comments are. Well, you know what's happened in the last year is it's actually changed, and Facebook and Instagram and other platforms have sunk to YouTube's level because you know they've. I'm sure you've noticed they've changed the algorithms. Facebook used to just show you your friends and people you yeah. were following, and same with Instagram. But now, same as YouTube, just whatever is going to pop up in your feed. And that's what leads people to leave those types of comments because they wouldn't say that to their friend. They wouldn't say that to someone they chose to follow, but this idiot just popped up in my feed. Send. And what the algorithm does is it knows the people who are going to get triggered and fire off a comment. And it shows it to them first because yeah. it wants them to comment and engage. 
They don't realize they're playing into it. I got a comment the other day on one of my things that literally said, why is this guy showing up in my feed? I don't like him or something like that. And I wrote back like, hey, here's a tip. If you don't want this in your feed, don't comment because now the algorithm thinks you want more of this. He'll comment again, rest assured, in a week minimum, <laughs> he's going to be talking trash again. Yeah, I, I, I have to admit, I'm not perfect about this because I know what they're up to, but sometimes I see something and I'm just like, I have to offer my witty two cents. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. I always regret it. Most of the time I start writing <laughs> and I'm like, you know what, forget it. And I, like, I just erase it and I keep scrolling. Yes, that, that's the great thing is you don't have to hit send. Yeah, it's, it reminds me, there was a... Um, trying to think of, I think it was psycho cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz I could be wrong but he talked about or no maybe it wasn't I, I can't remember what book it was like an older book um but it was like when somebody uh maybe it was how to win friends and influence people if if I find out I will I will update this but basically said something to the effect of like if you're really mad at somebody write out a letter you know by hand and wait three days and <laughs> if on that third day by the end of that third day if you still feel like you need to send that letter send them the letter but in most cases you will have worked through it on your own you won't be there won't be any need to start any drama with somebody and just the act of writing it out by hand will just you'll get all these feelings out and it'll just dissipate. So for me, I feel like that's the case. I, I don't know if you ever do that sort of a thing. I feel like you have Absolutely. To... I mean, I, I type emails and don't send them sometimes. What, to like angry respondents to your emails? Yeah, or... yeah wow. if someone sends me something, sometimes I, my instinct is, oh God, I want to tell this person I'm really pissed and type it out. And I'm like, I can't send this. Delete. Yeah. I... Then I write something nicer and send that. Exactly. I, you know That's what? the great I, thing about typing. You know, the, the, the thing that blows my mind, Alex, is it's easy to lose your temper in a conversation if somebody gets you angry. But yeah. these are people who, who are typing it out and have that moment before they hit send where they could take that time to reflect and they don't. And that's what makes it even more amazing. That lack of objectivity that people who leave angry comments on strangers things have about what they're doing. Yeah. And like you said, you're guilty of it too. I've probably done it a couple of times in my life too, although I really, really try to make a point not to. Now, if I comment on social media, I usually try to be encouraging, or at okay. least if I'm going to offer up a, a viewpoint that's in contrast with the person I'm commenting to, I try to do it politely and respectfully. I, I actually had to do that recently. I mean, I didn't, I didn't have to. I didn't have to do anything. You felt compelled. Comments. Yeah. But there was somebody was talking about they, they a door jam pull up bar that they saw, and it was like, they said it was like for three dollars. I'm like, that is literally the greatest find in history, apart from maybe finding a totally free one. So I was like, that's great. And he had posted some pictures. He's like, oh, you know, here, like, what do you guys think of like, you know, some of the the exercises and, um, you know, pull ups were one of them. And then another one was like, put it on the ground. You do push ups, and then like, you know, dips. And I was like, look, I don't think you'd really need it for the dips or the push ups. Just do them you know, regular way, but for pull-ups, it's great. You can't really get a big range of motion doing a dip unless it's like elevated on something, right? Yeah, it was supposed to be uh, like tricep dips, you know. Um, so not like the like the parallel bar dips or, or what have you. Um, but then somebody else commented like, you're completely wrong about this. Um, I've used it for push-ups and it's worked great for me. And they posted a picture of himself and he had definitely made an improvement, you know, in his physique. And... Uh, I said, okay, you know what? If it's work for you, maybe I'm wrong. You know, did you find that the push-ups got you a better, bigger range of motion, or, or what did what did you find? And uh, you know, so I made it like a respectful thing, even though he was he was being a little yeah. bit antagonistic. I was like, okay, you know, like it, it yeah, was. You gave him the benefit of the doubt. Exactly. And exactly. I, I try to do that whenever I comment. I always, you know, you could read someone's comment in different tones in your voice, you know. So I always try to read it in like the friendliest way I can, if there's a, a way to do that. Yeah. You know, another thing is uh, I'll, if I'm going to leave something that would maybe be contrary to what that person uh, had typed about or whatever, I'll, uh, I'll be like, hey, it's just a suggestion, you, you know, no problem at all if you don't, you know, if you don't want to accept it, but here's what I have found or, or what have you. I'd be curious if you were to try it, if you would, if you would find that it worked. Like, try to make it as conciliatory yeah. as I can, if I, if I really want to help. If I really don't, yeah. I just skip over it. But, um, but yeah, otherwise, I think most people don't read it in the friendly tone. 
they read it in like the sneer. Oh, no, that's true. I mean, you and I have a unique perspective because we're on the other side of it. Yeah. But for most people, they're not putting content out. I mean, of course, the other thing I'm sure you know is when most of the time when people really leave nasty comments, if you look at their page, they have like a private profile and no picture or anything like that. So the hundred percent. The more hidden you are, the nastier you can be. Like you, you and I are, are public figures to a certain extent. Exactly. So we we have to conduct ourselves a little bit better for that reason. I mean, obviously, it, the the more success and eyes on you you have, the more that amplifies. Yeah, but, and uh, I I think neither too, of us are quite at that point where we need to worry about getting canceled yet. Thankfully, not not yet. Yeah, <laughs> I I think we're both in the in that direction, but um, you know, well, okay. So two things. Number one. Um, you'll find this funny because although I'm normally pretty good about, about not doing stuff like that, you know, who really likes to instigate me to do things like that is Pat Flynn. <laughs> he'll be like, he'll send me a screenshot. He'll be like, go respond to this guy. And, you know, I, <laughs> in this case, it's like done purely for entertainment purposes. You know, it's never, it's like, we just want to see what the person's going to say. And I, again, I'm at the point now where I have like, you know, I, I have a sizable enough platform where enough people can see me do stuff like this, but yeah. um, but we're doing it in a, in a playful way. And so I think the people who know me know that like I would just be trolling this person. But there have been so many times he'll he'll send me a, like a link or he'll send me a screenshot. I'd be like, you got to go comment on this, you know, or let's, you know, let's see what we can get out of him. And uh, we have a good time. It's it's better than Netflix. I'll tell you that much. And uh, And it's a whole lot cheaper. Like Facebook just feeds this stuff to you like nonstop. So it makes it very easy. Well, you know, sometimes I kind of try to make a game out of writing back to people the nicest thing I can when they write me something rude or insulting, rather than engaging with them or taking it too seriously. And that that tactic has various outcomes. Sometimes people just delete their comment when I do that. And that's kind of a mixed bag, because I like having the comment and the response there. But also it means they recognize, oh, you know what? I was kind of being an asshole and I didn't realize it. Yeah, I think that's a good approach to it, especially when people are being like really vitriolic. If uh, you approach it the way you're talking about, and then I think the other thing you have to do is take a screenshot because number one, mm. I mean, you know, we're talking about the uh, uh, some petty stuff we're getting into here now. I like where we're going. Right. Well, but in this case, you I mean, you could go petty. You could, we could <laughs> we could definitely go the petty route. The other thing is that if you want to keep up with the idea of like not letting your haters get to you or being like, Hey, you're going to encounter a lot of resistance. You know, I, the, you know, the, the longer I've been doing this, the more I get it. Here's something that I got recently. And the guy, you know, I'm not, and you blank his name out, obviously, you know, yeah, like, no, but, I don't, I don't like to do that. Cause then it's like, it's, it's giving way too much weight to something that's not worth it. I'm not going to waste th that. I'm not going to share that with everybody. If people scroll through my comments and they see it and they want to jump in. That's fun sometimes, but yeah. I'm not going to give that, person the spotlight i mean for every i'm sure this is the same way for you too for every nasty comment i get i get 10 really nice ones easily and if i'm not going to go out of the way to screenshot and highlight every single nice comment i get why the heck would i screenshot a nasty one you know uh, you're 100 percent right but i will also give you this counterpoint it's even being very polite we're having a very fine conversation right. people 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 love the drama that's why you would do it right exactly that's what I have to do. I'll have to title this like like Alex and Al debate, and it's going to be like us head to head. You know, like right? this that would be a great thumbnail. I like that. that. I, I think I have a good a good profile picture I could send you. That you let's could. do it. I, one thing I I will say is that uh, I remember I had a I did a uh, conversation with Brett Jones because he had a new program that came out. And the first mm -hmm. like 20 minutes of a conversation was, I would say kind of like this, you know, it was just, well, it was a lot of us like catching up because I hadn't talked to him in like many years and somebody left a, like a nasty comment, which is still up by the way. And you know, anybody can go check it out and screenshot it if they want. And uh, the guy was like, Oh, you spent 20 minutes, you know, you know, wasting my time. I'll never get this back. And I was like, you didn't, why didn't you just skip forward until, you know, we were talking <laughs> about what you wanted. It just, um, but one thing that I have found that can be helpful, depending on the case, I don't do it a lot because I think the people who I generally like you, I like to try to put positivity out into the world and, you know, give people reasons to feel encouraged and kind of like they're just bombarded by negativity all the time. So I feel like if they're yeah. in my world, it should be like a repose before they have to go back out and do battle with, you know, 
the, the that's boss. exactly how I feel about it too. Yeah. But sometimes people will send something or, or what have you. And I'm like, you know what, I can like turn this into an email and do it in a way that, you know, and again, I, ne I never share the person's name or, you know, their email address or anything like that. Um, and then I, like I did one, it was last year, some guy, I won't go into all the details, but he's just complaining about, uh, about something that I had sent. And, um, and then I contrasted that with an email that I had gotten the very same day from a guy who was like raving about one of my programs, how it helped him you know, get stronger and fitter and like his kids are doing it with them and they're losing weight and they feel awesome. And um, so I tied it together as, you know, uh, in something that was actually uh, valuable to people. So on a rare occasion, I do it. Generally speaking, if something yeah, negative or, or stupid comes in, I just ignore it completely. Uh, but on occasion, if I feel like I can use it to, to teach a valuable lesson or Again, contrast it with you know, the vast majority of the emails or comments that I get. I'll do that if I think it's going to be, again, something where people leave and they feel like this actually added to my day and was not a waste and it didn't contribute to all the other negativity that I've got to deal with. You know, the, the one time that I can recall that I did share something sort of like what we're talking about is I, I posted a, a reel on Facebook, I guess it was about six months ago, doing um a body weight leg curl. You know, my feet were anchored under my fence and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm leaning over and coming back up, which is a hamstrings exercise. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people think it's a back exercise and a lot of people think it's a dangerous exercise for your back or your knees. And I got a lot of comments. This, this is one of the most viewed things I've ever posted on social media. I think it got almost 3 million views. And there were dozens of comments like this guy's going to blow out his back this guy's going to blow out his knees this guy's an idiot he doesn't know what he's doing he's going to hurt himself this is the stupidest exercise ever just really just so many of them and i put together a little reel just like highlighting and it just said like thanks for the comments just like highlighting <laughs> and it didn't even get a lot of views or a lot of traction i was like all right there's no reason to do this people my audience doesn't doesn't want this some people so I I love that drama. really it really just blew me away how how many people made the same comment it's like can't you see that a lot of other people made this comment already? You really have to throw your hat in there too. Yeah. You know, what would have been great is if you had done like a, a comeback video and it was like, you're in a body cast, you're like, Hey guys, you know, like, Hey, internet lifting judge forum. You know, you were totally right. I totally should have listened to you and you know, or whatever, but uh, it like something tongue in cheek like that is always funny in a case like that. But, uh, but again, like it's a gamble because if your audience is not, if your audience doesn't respond to negativity, which I think is good, um, you know, something like that, it's just like, eh, okay, you know, I'll wait for the next one. They, they just aren't. Yeah, really no, I'm just, I'm just, just sticking to, to giving fitness content and, and health content and, uh, you know, a little bit of diet stuff because people ask me about that. You know, the, the, you mentioned earlier the, the Game Changers movie. Mm -hmm. I, I've been eating a lot more meat lately and I posted a video. Uh, on social media about how I think meat kind of gets a bad rap and I really like meat. And it, it got a whole lot of comments from some people who were really excited to hear that that was my stance on it. Mm -hmm. And other people who were really angry and insulted and hurt in various levels about it. And some people on, on the, the disagreeing side were very respectful and polite and cordial and, other people were not. And it was just interesting to see that that really is a very polarizing topic for people. Yeah, that, it, it really blows my mind, honestly, because I've, like, I like it's it's food because it's you know, so it's, obvious when you eat meat, how good you feel and how awesome it is for you. Right, Alex? Exactly. A hundred percent. How could you to ignore that is to, is to ignore the, the, the sun in the sky, you know? Well, but people do that too. People say, no, don't go in the sun. Stay inside all day. Never go in the sun. Took the words right out of my mouth. Exactly. It's like, you know, these are things that, you know, sun has been there since before the dawn of time. And somehow, you know, now, like if you, if you deign to go out in it for like, you know, uh, even a millisecond too long, next thing you know, you're just going to burn to a crisp. Cancer. And yeah. You're going to have stage four <laughs> cancer, you know, mm. of, of the, of the skin. Someone's the, typing in the comments right now. My grandmother died of skin cancer. You stupid asshole. How yeah. dare you? We're not talking about her. Exactly. I'm sure she was a lovely lady. 
um, even though she's dead. Uh, yeah, I I have a I have a very we difficult. We need time. to wrap this up soon. <laughs> right. I, I I do think it's crazy that like it's like the most basic of things now have, have become like things that and I, this isn't meant to sound insulting, but that people need help with. Like when people are like, well, you know, what should I eat? It's like, okay, I like to apply what I call the gun to the head test. It sounds very morbid, but I just say like, let's just do a thought experiment. If somebody, not me, okay, but if somebody put a gun to your head and they said, what foods do you think you would need to eat in order to lose weight? You would probably come up with a lot of foods that would be helpful. Fruits and vegetables. Everyone knows those things are healthy. Maybe you would say meat, maybe you wouldn't. But the point is, is that like a lot of the information that you would spit out is the stuff that you already know. Um, it's the same thing with, you know, with exercise. Like, what do I need to do to get fit? Like, if I were the only person who had that information, I would be a far richer man than I am right now. Well, you know, as, as a fitness professional, there's essentially two things that you do for people and two things that you've got to keep in mind. The first is that they just really need the accountability. Like you said, they know they need to do what they need to do. Your job yeah. is to make them do what they know they need to do, which is kind of a weird thing. But mm -hmm. that, that is what we need. And, and psychologically, there's something very powerful about an outside authority figure holding people accountable. I mean, obviously, we both have experienced firsthand that it really does work. Big time. And the other thing that I think we're both very aware of that most people aren't, and it's a hard thing for people to come to accept, but the ones who do come to accept this, usually it's a, well, for lack of a better term, a game changer for them, is that they maybe have been misled about what is the best thing for them by people who stand to profit from lying to them. And that's a real hard thing, especially in today's culture, for people to wrap their heads around. Yeah, it's easier to convince people uh or what's the word? It's like it's easier to con it's easier to fool people than to convince people that they've been fooled. Exactly. Yeah, I've I've seen this a lot, and you know, on the one hand, I can kind of understand because it's like okay, it's true to say that there are certain things that if you do, you know, you're going to get results more quickly, even if they're not, I don't know, like you know, totally crazy things. So, for instance, um, like I've shown this to people before. This is something I I learned in one of Pavel's books, like irradiation. You know, you squeeze someone's hand. And then you squeeze your other hand and then you squeeze your abs and you squeeze your glutes. Tension anywhere is tension everywhere. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. And then the more of that you add, the more tension you can get into something that seems completely unrelated. And uh, so there are definitely things like that, you know, that exist. But then there are people who are like, oh, well, you know, if you put butter in your coffee, you can lose weight. So by adding more calories right. to a drink, you can lose weight. Now, I happen to like and not that. to say that there aren't nuances to why there would be benefits to it, but right, nuanced discussions are getting are getting harder to have because people just want a quick soundbite and a quick headline, the blurb, and okay, now I know what that is. Yeah, and a lot of and times, you know, I'm sure there's people. Mm -hmm. No, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sure there's, there's people listening to us right now who maybe don't agree with everything that we've said, who think, oh, these guys think they know everything, but they're the idiots. It's like the conclusions that I've come to. I have not come to because I read something or an authority figure told me something. I've come to the conclusions I've come to through my own firsthand experience, my own common sense, and my own intuition. And I encourage other people to do the same thing. So if you have different conclusions than me, and they've come from your intuition, your common sense, and your experience, and not from something someone else told you, then I fully support you on doing whatever you think and forget what I said or forget what anyone says. But if you only believe something because an authority figure said it or because it was shrubbed down your throat enough times for enough years, then that's not a good reason to believe it. Exactly. And that's, I think, going to be my final thought. I think it's an excellent final thought. And I would, one thing that you said, that people might not agree with, with us on everything. I hope they don't agree with us on everything. I don't agree with anybody on everything. Yeah. If, if you agree with everything somebody's saying, somebody's not thinking. And you, that's the one thing that we have in our advantage in the kingdom of creatures that we live in is that we have this higher order thinking. So we might as well use it. Um, now I'm gathering that you probably have to leave pretty soon. Yeah, I got a session at, at 12. So okay. I got to wrap it up. But I really enjoyed this talk. I did too. I thought it was a blast. 
Um, I want people to buy your new ebook, and so I want to make sure in the final two minutes that we have that uh, they will go out and do that because I've always really enjoyed your work. So please give us a quick plug, and uh, listeners go out and get it. That is in order. So tell us. The book is called Mobility Man. It is a mobility ebook geared primarily toward men over 40, although any person who needs to work on their mobility, regardless of age or gender, probably will find this book useful. And if, if what I said to you today makes sense and you want to check out my book, check it out. I've got a bunch of other books too. If anyone is not necessarily interested in mobility, they should check those out too. And uh, it's been a pleasure chatting. Pleasure has been all mine. Folks, thank you for listening. And as always, have fun and happy training.